Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerSportsBetting.com. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let's talk boxing. I made a video earlier today where I talked about the new NBC boxing venture with Heyman Boxing that really could lift the sport to an entirely new level. Understand the cable stations Showtime and HBO only reach a fraction of the audience that broadcast networks reach. Right? The audience watching boxing shows on NBC could conceivably be far bigger, far bigger than even a well-watched fight on an HBO or a Showtime. So this is a major move for boxing. <clears throat> now, some of you here in the comment section to the video, and I read the comments, at least I try to, express concern over the venture. Right? The idea is that the Muhammad Ali Act establishes a firewall between a fighter's manager, right? That's the representative who negotiates contracts on the fighter's behalf and the fighter's promoter, right? Many of you want to know how Al Heyman, who many fighters refer to as their managers, can be involved in purchasing time from a network for boxing. Right? The idea is, doesn't this violate the firewall established by the Muhammad Ali Act? Right? That's the argument here. Now let me just say a couple of things. First, it's my understanding that this NBC series is going to be promoted by licensed promoters. Right? Established outfits like Lou DiBella. Uh, Goosen Promotions, uh, Warriors Promotions, other promotional outlets that have experience promoting big money fights. So if you're worried about the oversight, understand there is going to be a promoter. And understand they're going to be subject to State Boxing Commission oversight. So let's say there's an event taking place in Nevada. Understand, the promoter will submit its promotional contracts to the Nevada State Athletic Commission, right? The fighters will be protected, their compensation will be listed on the promotional contracts, and you will have the regulatory oversight that you normally have. Let me make a more foundational point, though, right? We don't know how these deals are structured. Right? What you often hear fighters say might not legally comport with the legalese, the language of their agreements. I'll give you a great example. In the last few days, Gary Shaw left Rock Nation. Right? Gary Shaw is the promoter for Brian Jennings. He's one of the promoters anyway, right? For Brian Jennings, who will be fighting Vladimir Klitschko. Now, they had a press conference in New York City. Understand, Brian Jennings is with Gary Shaw, not Rock Nation anymore, right? Those two parties had a divorce. From what I hear, it was an amicable divorce, right? They've gone their separate ways. So, Brian Jennings, who... I'm sure, you know, wants to see Rock Nation succeed, right? You know, the idea is many people respect Jay-Z, right? Both as an artist and as a businessman. And they like the idea of Jay-Z getting into the boxing business. Maybe Jay-Z will bring a little bit extra glamour, a little bit more entertainment know-how, a little bit higher profile to the sport, which could benefit fighters. So Brian Jennings was being interviewed and he said, you know, yeah, I'm down with Rock Nation. Now, many people interpreted that to mean that 
Rock Nation was Brian Jennings promoter we know it's not right Gary Shaw is Brian Jennings's promoter Gary Shaw and Brian Jennings have a promotional contract right both guys know this Gary Shaw will be the promoter at least one of the promoters right subject to state commission oversight during the Jennings Vladimir Klitschko fight now if you don't know what's going on behind the scenes you might reach the wrong conclusion that Jennings is still contractually with Rock Nation right a fighter says hey I'm down with Rock Nation doesn't necessarily mean Rock Nation is his promoter now let's get real world here for a second let's say I'm a fighter there are gonna be several people who I get advice from right maybe I'll have a manager right someone who has a state issued license from the local boxing commission right who you know reports to the local boxing commission but I might also have my own set of business advisors right guys who help me with different parts of my life right maybe I have a nutritional advisor maybe I have a financial advisor right maybe I even have a life coach who I talk with from time to time right the point is simply this the Muhammad Ali Act certainly applies to managers there's no question about that but would it apply to my accountant would it apply to my personal financial advisor what about my life coach would the Muhammad Ali Act apply to my life coach now let's say my financial advisor has delivered for me big time right the uh, stocks he recommended um, you know have been dead on let's say he told me that Greece might be leaving the EU and I'm reading the paper and I see certain developments in the world and I say wow this guy has been on it right let's say he you know warned me in advance that certain commodities oil might actually crater in price and I was able to short oil whatever let's say my uh, financial advisor has proven his metal let's say whatever I hear from anybody else with regard to my boxing career I run it through my financial advisor and he gives me good advice now if the fight happens right unless you've seen the contracts that Heyman boxing has with each of its clients you don't know whether Al Heyman is listed as the manager and subject to the dictates of the Muhammad Ali Act or whether Al Heyman is simply a financial advisor or a life coach right you know that's the way it is we all have our group of buddies right the entire concept of an entourage I don't think you can go by fighters statements at press conferences or after fights where a fighter says hey man you know I'm down with this group or I'm down with this man I think it's a reach to then think that you know the wording of the contracts right so the point is this if Al Heyman is not a fighters manager if a fighter has a different manager right then Al Heyman wouldn't run afoul of any firewalls listed in the Muhammad Ali Act now would he right if he's an advisor and not listed as a manager and if the local state boxing commission allows for those distinctions right and keep in mind in the United States we have different boxing commissions right the Muhammad Ali Act the Federal Act basically through right its interpretation to 50 different state boxing commissions 
right? And so if the local boxing commission allows for distinctions between your nutritional advisor, your life coach, your financial advisor, right? Your boxing manager, then I think that it's jumping to conclusions too quickly. If you haven't seen the contracts on file with the State Boxing Commission, for you to reach a conclusion on exactly what Heyman Boxing's role is in an individual fighter's career. Right? Let me also say too that if you're worried about the compensation that the fighters are receiving, that's going to be on file with the local boxing commission, right? As well as, as you can imagine, the promotional contracts and the managerial contracts for the fight. And of course, the fighters are not only going to be subjected to the medical testing of local boxing commissions. But keep in mind, for this venture, the fighters are even exceeding the requirements of state and federal law. Did you know that the fighters in this series are going to be subject to drug testing and all this other stuff that they don't have to be? Right? Keep in mind, some commissions right now don't require drug testing. Right? Understand, this NBC Heyman boxing venture is actually going to require random drug testing. In other words, if the concern is the compensation of the fighters, that's going to be fully disclosed. Right? If it's who's promoting the event, well, these events will be promoted by established promoters. On record, Goosen Promotions, etc. If it's the health of the fighters, understand the standard that's being employed for this venture far exceeds the legal standard. Right? So if you're a pro fighter, you shouldn't have concerns because the fighters, quite frankly, are going to be very well compensated, right? I'm sure we're going to figure out, especially since the crowd is going to be much bigger, right? Possibly over a hundred million, right? Viewers, as opposed to 20 million, right? We'll even cut the 100 million, let's say 70 million viewers. Right? Even that would be several times what an HBO or a typical Showtime fight is. So if the fighters are getting paid, and if there are health and safety precautions, and if the payments are fully disclosed to the local boxing commission, somebody tell me what the problem is. Right? It seems to me that you have a lot of people in boxing who are looking for an edge, right? And they'll complain about things even when the fighters are benefiting from the arrangement and we, the boxing public, are benefiting from the arrangement. Let's think this through, right? If I don't have cable, if I don't see HBO and Showtime, I'm out of luck, right? With this venture, wow, I'm getting fights on broadcast television. I think about it. I think this is a winning setup. I think we should really sit back and support it. The next time you hear someone say something about the Muhammad Ali Act and, you know, try to speculate about uh, Richard Schaefer, Al Heyman, whoever, right? You should just ask yourself. Are we getting the opportunity to watch quality fights? Folks, I encourage you to just look at the card being offered for March, their inaugural show. It's spectacular from a boxing perspective, right? Big names fighting each other, right? Are we getting good fights? Are the fighters getting paid? Are safety precautions in place? The compensation, is it disclosed? If the answer to all of those questions are yes, then let's feel fortunate and enjoy the show. Let me hear from you. 
Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Let me say this too. The Ali Act is really the creation of Senator John McCain. Right? Now, I applaud Senator McCain. <laughs> McCain, by the way, for multiple administrations, has been pushing the federal government and the President of the United States to pardon Jack Johnson. Right? McCain is an avid fight fan. Just understand that when McCain pushed to have the Muhammad Ali Act passed, I don't believe it was his intention to try to prevent quality fights from happening on NBC with safety uh, precautions for the fighters and top dollar being paid to everyone with disclosures made to the State Boxing Commission. I'm sure John McCain himself is thrilled by this development, right? Anyway, let me hear from you. Let's continue the dialogue. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. If you feel there's something shady here, if you feel that fighters are fighting against their will on national broadcast television in high-profile fights in which they're receiving top dollar, right? If you don't like the idea of established promoters being involved with this venture, right? If you have some objection. I hope you list it here in the comment section to this video so we can all read it. Let me also point out too, YouTube Nation, you don't need for me to moderate any discussion, right? If someone leaves a provocative comment that you want to respond to, feel free to make a video or write your own comment in the comment section to this video. Let's hear from you. Thanks for stopping by.